Good day to you, ex-communists. We're breaking away from our regularly scheduled alien slaying activities to bring you a special program we like to call Operation Zerg Overload, where we kill us some exalt. We start off, as usual, by dramatically jumping out of planes. It's just so common for us. Then, it's off to rescue our covert operative, Agent Adrian Rod. The rules of the game are simple. Adrian Rod needs to hack two of these... relays? I guess they're supposed to be like satellite uplinks or something, but that orange stuff they admit, I feel like these things are some sort of airborne mutagen delivery system. I saw how this worked in Amazing Spider-Man. If any of my soldiers turn into lizards, I'm gonna be pissed. The number one rule of this mission is that I need to extract my covert operative, and Adrian Rod only has a grenade, a pistol, and a sweet jacket. So, to start, instead of having her rush off the roof to hack stuff, I need to keep her right where she is, where she can't aggro anything, and slowly move the team up to support her. Some of the team heads to the roof opposite of Adrian Rod, while the others stick to the ground. And then it's Gemini Spark that spots our evil counterparts, Exalt. And they are just our evil counterparts from the Mirror Universe or the Darkest Timeline or something. Also, did anyone else notice the scales that they have on their skin? My lizard mutagen theory is looking more and more likely. Anyway, Jimmy's new laser sniper rifle doesn't need a laser sight, cause it is a laser sight. One that burns. Let's watch her use it to kill Citrus Architect's evil counterpart, Veggie Engineer. Now, this group of Exalt soldiers has a heavy. He is DJ Sucre's evil counterpart, Mix Master Salty. And like DJ Sucre, Mix Master Salty has a rocket. Exalt is outnumbered 6 to 2 right now, so this is a bad situation for them. Exalt also has their own list of axioms they follow that they call the Exalt Exhortations. And Exalt Exhortation number 12 is saying oh means that you need to shoot a rocket. They swear because they're evil, and we don't want them shooting a rocket. So we use Gemini Spark to clear the table, Emmy San tenderizes the meat, and Citrus cooks him good. Now this Exalt soldier knows that he's up a creek without backup if he doesn't get some help. So he calls in some reinforcements, then takes a shot at Gemini. Luckily for me, Exalt doesn't have the most accurate soldiers. Now, Jimmy doesn't have line of sight to any of these soldiers, so Shiosk, ever the gentleman, opens the door for the little Lady Grey, and she thanks Shiosk for his hospitality by murdering an enemy combatant. Citrus then doubles down on laser guns with pump actions. Now, one fact about Exalt is that they are the least accurate enemies in the game. Seriously, the worst. And each time they miss, I like to think that there is an evil version of me named Slice screaming at his computer screen saying things like, How could you miss that? It's a giant hulking robot painted yellow by the hairs on my evil goatee. He's practically daring you to hit him. Stop missing. But now it's our turn and Gemini Spark is turning up the heat. I reposition the rest of my soldiers and it's Exalt's turn again which means they spend their time missing the 10 foot tall cyborg and somewhere Slice is swearing at his soldiers and cursing the random number generator. Now I want Adrian Rod to get some kills as a secondary sniper is what I crave. So she tosses her grenade to kill one exalt dude and destroy the dumpster the other one was hiding behind. And it can't get much worse than having a dumpster blown up in front of you. The smell must be horrendous. With no cover, the soldier seeks more protected areas, and finally, hits a target. Congrats man, you finally hit a target the size of a Volkswagen bug. I heard that the Empire has some stormtrooper positions open. You should apply, you're right up their alley. Oh wait, maybe you shouldn't because I think Gemini Spark is about to kill you. With Exalt dead, we reposition our soldiers some and prepare for what makes these covert missions difficult. At certain points, Exalt drops troops anywhere on the battlefield, though the most troublesome is when they drop behind your flank. And it's not a problem if you're prepared for it, but if you're not, well, even bad shooters can do a whole lot better when they have you flanked. Luckily, between Evil Emison and Jimmy, we have this flank thing covered. Twice. Adrian Rod hacks the first relay, and we're on our way to the second. When she gets there, Exalt drops right on top of her and Gemini. But any strategy that involves you sneaking up on a cyborg with a railgun and an itchy trigger finger is suspect to say the least. Adrian Rod finishes off the first target execution style, and Gemini puts his railgun to the temples of this sniper and kills him with such force that the sniper forgets that it's his ghost, not his corpse, that can move through walls. 
With both mutagen dispensers hacked, we can end the mission in one of two ways. Either kill all remaining exalt forces, or get your covert operative to the extraction point. And while I do move Adrian Rod towards the extraction point, I have seven soldiers on the field and only Gemini Spark has taken any damage. And at this point, I sort of feel like Exalt Soldiers aren't big threats, and I can treat them like experience point pinatas. And unlike other times where my hubris gets soldiers killed, my arrogance is rewarded. So ends Operation Zerg Overload. We stopped the populace of India from being turned into a bunch of lizard people, bullied our less accurate, poorly equipped, scaly counterparts, and got 14 kills worth of experience for our trouble. Today is a good day. Upon landing, we see that busting open all those exalt pinatas like children at a birthday party was worth it, as we have a lot of promotions. Zero One Bruiser DJ Sucre is promoted to Major and gets Will to Survive, which reduces all damage taken by two if he's in unflanked cover. I have a tough choice to make for Zero Nine Gemini Spark. Repair Servos is a great way to passively heal up to six damage on Gemini each battle, allowing him to tank more damage. But Expanded Storage gives him an extra use of some later mech modules, plus increases the ammo capacity of his main weapon by 50%. I normally choose Repair Servos, but with as often as I use collateral damage, extra ammo is highly welcome, and that might prevent more damage for the team in the end. So I'm not 100% sold on it, but I'm going to give Expanded Storage a try. 08 Citrus Architect is also promoted to Major, which gets him extra conditioning, granting him more health depending upon the type of armor he's wearing. And all those kills pay off for 1-0 Adrian Rod, as she's now a corporal. The question here is do I want her to be a true backup for Jimmy and give her squad sight, or experiment a little with the new and improved snapshot, which would allow Adrian Rod to be a more mobile sniper? I almost pick squad sight for the full backup angle, but decide to test snapshot a little more and see if the more mobile approach helps balance out the squad. Now each time you complete a covert operation, you get a clue as to where Exalt headquarters is. The clue we were given was a little less specific than we'd like, and we're only told that they're not in South America. I don't know why hacking Exalt's computers gave us a clue that would only be considered helpful in a game of 20 questions, but it's all we got. So at least we can do an intelligence scan to find where their next cell is for the cheap price of 50 double S's. After we scan, we find another cell located in Egypt. And since Adrian Rod did such a good job last time, we are sending her again. With Adrian Rod off on another all-expenses-paid trip to Covert Insurgency, we start selling off all the gear we nicked off those Exalt corpses. We can equip those weapons, but they're no better than the standard ones, and we are up to laser weapons, so they're as good as junk to us. Though I do keep a rocket launcher that Mixmaster Salty never got to fire, because it kinda looks cool and DJ Sucre is looking to accessorize. We then send Citrus Architect to the Gene Lab to get some space LASIK. Excellent. Then our three satellites finish production. Shortly thereafter, our satellite uplead completes, and now we can pay off a bureaucrat in China with a satellite. We then give one to India so we can get the future combat perk, which reduces all officer training school and foundry research costs by 50%. By Grabthar's hammer. What a savings. Then. We give the last one to the old U.S. of A. Because we're nothing if not patriotic, cue up the eagle sound. We order an interceptor so that we can cover North America, then Citrus's gene modding completes. What we got him was called hyperreactive pupils. This makes it so that after a miss, Citrus's accuracy goes up by 10%, making consecutive misses less likely. After that, our carapace armor research completes, and it's time to interrogate ourselves the roided up muton we have in cold storage. It's Friday, Friday, Friday. Punch all you want, muton. It's no use. Rebecca Black will consume your soul. Now, armed with the plasma research credit, I am tempted to start researching plasma tech, but I have ignored all the UFO tech so far, so I'll start doing the UFO power source. After that, it's time for the end of the month report, and the council is pleased. They give us two more scientists, six more engineers, an A, a truck full of cash, and three gold stars. And while I'm trying to deal with this exalt threat, as long as they're around, we are at risk of getting our bank account drained again. So the only way to be sure that they don't spend our money is to spend it before they can. So the spending spree is on. First, I go to engineering and start construction of the foundry. 
then buy carapace armor for all my soldiers, a laser cannon for my new jet fighter in North America, an access lift to sub-basement 4 of the compound, and then, with my savings from having the future combat perk, go to the officer training school to buy wet work, rapid recovery, new guy, and lead by example. And just as our spending spree completes, it's time to, once again, rescue Adrian Rod from Exalt's clutches. Guess she's not hardcore enough to go in armed with only a pistol and an attitude and kill an entire Terra cell by herself, but then again, including Jack Bauer in this game would have been overpowered. So we give everyone their stylish new armor. Except it doesn't look as stylish on those who have gene mods. Dear Firaxis, if you're watching this, please let gene modded soldiers put on cool armor too. The sleeveless look is it's nice and all, but not that cool. Thanks for your consideration, Commander Splice of Splice Strategies. P.S. If you could explain why there is a pump action on a laser shotgun, I'd really appreciate it. This thing is really bugging me. So, I can't decide if this mission title is referring to a monster who just so happens to be unexpectedly chipper about everything, or a creature of the night that human resources hired just to meet some sort of arbitrary quota, and they're now our token undead employee. Either way, I'm positively excited to have you join us next week as we kill some more blood-sucking exalts in Operation Affirmative Vampire. Until then, I'm Splice, and remember that experience point pinatas aren't technically people. <laughs>